two o'clock on a Friday. We're coming to you live. <laughs> Me from Detroit, Michigan. Um, my name is Shanley Carlton. I'm on the customer success team at Saganworks, and we have Maggie Chesbro also uh, on the Saganworks team. We got Rochelle Campbell, we got Matt Grossman, and we have Shrinali Patel, who used to intern for us and is a student at University of Michigan in the art school. Um, you're looking at a Sagan. And we're basically going to explore Maggie's life together. Um, she's our digital marketing manager, and this is an ode to Maggie, self-made, um, basically her autobiography and a resume slash portfolio that she can share with other people to show all the awesome things that she's done. Um, so I'm just going to rotate a little bit, let you see the room, pretty sweet, and we'll come over here. And Maggie, maybe you can tell us a little bit about um, some of your work experience and we'll check out this resume that you had before you had a Sagan. Yeah. So this is a resume, just a basic uh, normal resume that you would see. I actually exported it from my LinkedIn profile. Um, and basically it's a one sheet uh, documentation of my work experience. But one of the things I didn't like about it is that it doesn't really speak to who I am. Um, it doesn't dive into all the things that I can do. And it only listed, you know, a few of my top skills when I have so many skills that I'd like to mm -hmm. share with people. Um, so I was looking for an alternative way to break down my resume um, and show off both my personality as well as dive into some of the you know, different social posts I've made, graphics, uh, projects I've worked on, um, infographics, different things like that in a really visually compelling way. And that's where SaganWorks, I thought was a great example. A little biased because I work for SaganWorks, but um, <laughs> I, you know, when I saw this product, I'm like, you know what, this is how I, how I would use SaganWorks. Um, and yeah, so I figured we'd have this webinar and kind of walk you guys through it. Cool. Okay, I'm going to close the resume because it's not fun to look at. <laughs> and here's All right. it broken out. Yeah. Woo! Okay. Um, where should we start? Tell us, where would you like us to start? Um, let's go actually to the right and go to the okay. skills and certification. Got it. Um, because this is something where I would probably share, if I were looking for another job, um, I would share this. But she's uh, not because she wants to work with us forever. Exactly. Um, so what I would do is I would include this um, in my resume or in my CV. Um, this is not necessarily meant to be in replacement of, it's in addition to. Um, and, you know, in my industry in marketing, uh, having a website and a portfolio is uh, expected when you're having applications. And so I thought this would be a really cool way to showcase all of that, but still stand out from the crowd. Um, and so that's how I did it. And so if, if I were to send this to someone, it'd likely be a recruiter or the future employer looking at this. And so I think probably where their minds would go to first would be skills and certifications. Um, and so instead of, if you recall that one sheet resume, um, it only highlighted three skills um, and it wasn't very visually compelling and didn't really dive into any of those. Um, mm -hmm. So here I outlined, you know, my top uh, skills are outside of the um, bookshelf. And then I added in all the social media platforms that I'm familiar with and actual certifications um, for yeah. Google ads and HubSpot and all those. I have some things. questions about the certifications because that's really awesome because each of these are like separate documents you could not include in a resume normally yeah. um are there is that how a lot of these tools work you can like get these you can get certified is that the same for photoshop or illustrator there are certain courses that you can take um either you have to have some sort of paid program you know linkedin has has uh remote learning opportunities there as well um, that you can get certified but hubspot offers a lot of um, different courses that are free and really great for people who are in the marketing industry or sales industry. Um, and so that's how I was able to incorporate those. Um, one other thing I'm noticing, and this might be helpful for our viewers, you can see this certificate up here 
uh, is a rectangle. And then this one over here is kind of like on a trophy on a pedestal. And the reason for that is that this one up here is an image file type. You can see this little icon. And basically, this is how we represent images on shelves in Sagamworks. And then um, if something's a document type, which we're considering PDFs to be a document, then they get this little trophy image. I really love this section of um, the Sagan because I feel like as a designer, like there's always so many things you want to list off of your skills and it becomes like too much information. Like even just looking at your resume, like the three skills that you had, I couldn't even recall. Like, but looking at this, it's just so easy to look at and understand and that you clearly have a lot of skills that are that don't even look like it's like too packed or something you know mm -hmm. I really love it I like that too and actually yeah it's kind of like when you hang up I don't know if you have your degree you know whenever you when you graduate college they give you your your degree a lot of people will frame it I I, ha I don't know where mine's at, actually. It's, like, in a box somewhere. <laughs> um, but a lot of times, these certificates, you would not be able to, like, showcase them yeah. at all. Um, they'd be, like, virtual, you know? They get they get sent to you over an email or something. And then this is kind of, like, your trophy wall. Yeah, exactly. It just looks so much more impressive when it's, like, on a wall, like, mounted. And this is basically the same thing. Well, yeah. and it's, you know, the great thing about this too is as I, you know, keep learning and getting more certifications, I can add them into there. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, another thing too is like, let's say, you know, at some point I do find another position and they're not using HubSpot, for example, as a marketing tool. Um, I won't have like documentation of those certifications anymore because it won't be tied to the account that I achieved got them in so this is a place where you know I can have them here all the time you can download directly from there um, and so it's kind of my archive my source of truth <laughs> yeah no that's it yeah that makes did you sense oh too. sorry um did you order the like your skills in a certain way or um, yeah, so I thought about, so the ones that I put on uh, over the bookshelf, um, those are kind of the top ones that I would think uh, would be of interest to recruiters who are looking for someone in my position or role. And then the rest are also very important, but um, kind of more like, yeah, I manage social media. All right, well, what social media am I most comfortable with? Here's the icons that you can, and logos that you can quickly identify um and so yeah that's that's kind of how i organized it um and then if you uh go up a little bit you'll see hubspot there and then i put active campaign underneath because those are both kind of competitors in the same market um but one's just significantly less expensive than the other um so i wanted to kind of pair them next to each other to say that like i have knowledge in both this one and that one um, but they serve very similar purposes. Same with like the creative Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, those three icons underneath um, are all part of Adobe Creative Cloud, but those are the ones that I am most comfortable with. Cool. Um, I'm gonna keep going. I wanna, <laughs> there's a lot in the room and I wanna get to the part <laughs> where we get to see pictures of your life and places you've I know, been. Well, and that's the cool thing. Like this, that was just one wall and yeah. that's something that you wouldn't get from just a LinkedIn profile or um, from just my, my little resume that I have there. Right. Um, so on these walls, you'll see actually all three of these walls are my current job that I have now. Um, she's so marketing Sagamerks. That's how good she is at her job. Even in her resume, she's marketing. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta. Um, but I'm actually super excited. So we can have a little win here. Um, you'll see there's a little loop, uh, squiggly arrow. That's because I just got a promotion. Um, and so now I'm the digital marketing manager. So this is one way that I showed a promotion versus in my uh, uh, one sheet resume from LinkedIn. It's just, you know, another title under the same um, company. It doesn't really, you know, aesthetically show it off. So that's how mm -hmm. I integrated it here. And then um, I manage several different um, businesses. And so those are all the logos underneath and I broke them out. Um, in the bookshelves and then kind of dove in on separate walls um, for the main uh, companies. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna show that you can, if I double click one of these links, it'll take 
take us to the restaurant website. Um, Blue Llama happens to, let's see, yeah. Mm -hmm. Blue Llama has one of our embedded sagans on it. So um, I won't load it here, but because I already have another one open. Um, but yeah, you can explore the whole restaurant on this, this website. So, cool. so definitely check that out. Come into Maggie Sagan and then leave, come here <laughs> and go into a new Sagan. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Guys. Okay. Let's see what's up over here. Okay, so you've really broken down all of the like main businesses that you've helped market, it looks mm -hmm. like currently. Yeah, so then over here, you'll see Blue Llama Jazz Club, which we just saw their website. But um, so a few of the things that I do as a digital marketing manager is I, you know, write press releases. I create all the social posts, all the emails, um, all the outward facing content. That's pretty much what I do. Um, and so uh, in this role, you're going to, our resume, um, you're going to see a lot of metrics. Um, and so the whole bottom shelf of both of those are very much about the metrics. That's the behind the scenes of a, uh, co a cocktail photo shoot. This is cute. I like this <laughs> photo. Um, so sorry, these are the metrics down here on the bottom shelf. Yeah. So these are things that someone, a recruiter who's knowledgeable in, you know, marketing and what they want to yeah. see, this is... <laughs> This is where you would find it. Um, and I broke them down by year um, rather than by quarter. Um, cool. So you can see the, the difference there. Cool. I'm going to back it up. I like how it acts as proof or evidence of what you've done. Well, and again, it's like all of that data is lost when you do leave a company and go somewhere else unless they're using the same tools then you can transfer it over but um you know these metrics that's something that's uh just with the the business you're working with and then same with over here this was my position before um and so i incorporated some of the graphics uh that i made in the beginning that one's not the best one. That one's better. There you go. Yeah, I was like, this one looks really that cool. That one's when I was still learning <laughs> um, a bit. Um, and they had, so Exchange Capital Management um, Inc. was the company I worked for. And um, they had a partnership with the U of M uh, women's hockey team. So I got to make a few graphics for that. Um, and I incorporated them here. Cool. Um. Maybe some of the skill set because you do have a marketing background, and like I think you said, you, or you told me in the past that you might you minored in graphic design. Um, how has that helped you in making this Sagan, like generating some of the art? Um, yeah. So um, you. So one of the skills that I mentioned in the skills on the skills and certifications wall was Canva, which is a free uh, like photo editing graphic design tool you can get online. Um, mm -hmm. And so a lot of these I made just through there, but you could also do it through Photoshop um, or Illustrator. But these transparent um, text graphics you'll see, like the digital media and marketing specialist or part-time work or anything that's not, that's an image without a background, mm -hmm. I um, use through there because they have an easy remove background tool, okay. um, as well as a bunch of different options for uh, different colors you can use, fonts, all that fun stuff. So um, it only took, honestly, like a few minutes to get, oh, well, to get the, the images um, made. It only took a few minutes, but gathering all the other assets, you know, like well overdue because a lot of the stuff I need anyway for just a general resume and follow-up interview. Um, so it's nice to have it all here that I can access. Um, right. So you're saying that a lot of the the time spent is in gathering the content, not once, in creating yeah, once it. Once you have it, it's within minutes you could create this Sagan, you know, because it's just a matter of, you know, what kind of objects you want to put in. Um, and since I come from a graphic design background, like, you know, visually, I have um, a lot of ideas and creativity. And so for here, you know, I included the lockers, the tennis racket, um, 
the tennis ball because one, I, I played tennis all throughout high school. So I wanted to incorporate that. I've got Spartans everywhere because I'm a Spartan at heart. Um, and then the first, uh, first shelf on the bookshelf, those are actually more details about my degree. Um, okay. So that'll take you directly to the MSU website for, you know, I majored in English, I have a minor in graphic design and another in gender studies. Um, and then below that, you'll see some fun things like my graduation, my cap that I made. Um, I like the hair color. Thanks. <laughs> and then um, I also took a lot of art classes and so I incorporated this photo. Sorry, I'm... artworks oh, down there too. Okay, sorry, I wanna see your, your cap. Oh, I love this. So cute. So this is art that you made at the bottom? Yeah, so if you go to the very last one, oh, uh -huh. that one. <laughs> sorry, one. sorry, I'm oh, you're ahead of you in the call. <laughs> yeah, so the very last one, that was one of my final projects and I used um, different computer parts and glued them down. And you'll see once we get into more of uh, the cool, the cool part about the Sagan too is that I get to show my personality and that I kind of segregated all to, to one side of the wall, which we'll get to, but um, I love Gustav Klimt and he's a, a, an artist from back in the day. Uh, most people would probably know his uh, work called The Kiss. Oh um, my gosh, Maggie, I'm moving in my house actually, because- Oh no, that's a different look, one. Look, this is- Wait, I have right that, here. it's over there. Yeah, it's <laughs> over here, yeah. Um, and I have, oh my God, oh, I need to show you this other thing too that's relevant to that. Keep going, so you love- Okay, um, so I titled this one The Modern Kiss and it was supposed to be a commenting on online dating. Um, and so this was my interpretation of it. If you know anything about Gustav Klimt, like he loves to use gold. Um, so that's mm -hmm. why there's the metallic gold in there as well. Um, but yeah, I really so, love this. And I can like already see how you could possibly make like an entire Sagan just about this one piece of artwork. Oh yeah, no, you could make a whole portfolio about it. Like your own virtual gallery. I mean, there's a ton of ways mm -hmm. you can do Sagan works. Maggie, look, so you know this, I modified a clip to the other Ikea painting that's um, the woman laying. Do you yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay, so I put like a whole bunch of Mardi Gras beads on her. Do you see her hair? Oh my gosh, uh, I love that. Do you like it? <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. I almost bought that as well, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think from Ikea. Um, yep. <laughs> But yeah, and you're going to see a lot of uh, Gustav Klimt influence uh, in my Sagan as well as Van Gogh because, you know, got to enjoy the classics. Um, yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me sit down again and we'll leave this. <laughs> but this is cool. It took me a while to see, um, you know, it's kind of like the optical illusion with like the vase and the two heads. I didn't oh, yeah. like see the, I didn't see the kissing yet right at first, <laughs> but now, now I do. <laughs> but right. I, I didn't see it right at first. Okay. So you want to go to your person, your personality wall? There's personality yeah. everywhere. Right. Personality everywhere, which is cool, but also like what's completely ignored on my, uh, my LinkedIn resume, here it is right now, you know, like completely laid out and um, showcases more of who I am. Now, this is something that I would definitely tailor to whatever industry or position I was looking at, you know, like there's certain things like if I'm applying to Sagan Works, you know, they're a fun tech startup, you know, I probably would include all the things I've included in here, you know, like there's a picture of my tattoos, there's, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, my favorite movie, like quote, there's, there's a bunch of fun stuff there that I think uh, would be appreciated at Sagan Works versus if I was applying somewhere else, um, you know, maybe I would leave that stuff out if, uh, if I thought they weren't. <laughs> Uh, as cool with certain things like that. And of course, you're going to see a lot of me and my dog throughout. <laughs> <laughs> we have um, we have a comment from Rob in the chat. He said uh, th that he loves the opportunity to include these items of uh, stories and interests to create conversations. So like, clearly, this, this is a talking point. You get to talk about Zuko because we have so many pictures of Zuko in the Sagan. Oh, yeah. Well, and this is a cool thing too, where like you could incorporate this via a link um, when you apply for a position and you can either have 
that recruiter look through and then you get an interview as a result? Or, you know, since everything's virtual now, maybe this is something you present in an interview, you know, to kind of like mm. show off your skills in a different way. And also like, especially in my industry, being able to adapt to different types of technology is huge. Um, and so it was cool to be able to integrate that here. Um, and I had set up my Sagan so that it's very like homey, conversational, you know, like here's two, two chairs, come take a, come sit down with me, you know, let's talk about this. Um, yeah, I have a question about your process a little bit. Like, yeah. so clearly you've made, like built a very strong aesthetic with all this furniture and it really like flows, but I was wondering if you like do that first a little bit or do you bring in more of the information? So for me, I think everyone works differently. And, mm -hmm. you know, once you get in there, you're kind of, you're, you're able to kind of play around and figure out what you like. But for me, I start with the furniture. Um, Cause I think of that as almost like a frame for what I'm doing. So mm -hmm. I started with like, all right, this is the center of my Sagan, probably where I want them to start. Um, let me make a desk, you know, like this is my virtual office kind of like welcome. Let me introduce myself. Um, and so there were certain things that I incorporated to also highlight, you know, different aspects of myself, you know, like I right now am using my laptop that looks like the one that's on the desk. I have my monitor over here, you know, like I basically recreated it. Here's the current <laughs> coffee cup, but like there's the orange one there. Um, an apple, right now I've got yogurt, but you know, same thing. Um, <laughs> I also get into photography, so I included a camera, um, of course, more pictures here, printer, a sculptor, uh -huh. um, just different, <laughs> different things that I would have at my desk. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he was so cute. Now he's 75 pounds. <laughs> the Humane Society said at max 35. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Women's March in D.C.? Yep, yep. I, I was there that. too, Maggie. Cool. Oh, that's me and my mom. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, and that's the other thing too, like, you know, you want to be able to show your personality and um, there are certain companies that you can, you know, like some people might be like, oh, you're getting a little political in your resume, you know, and maybe that's something that you would uh, strike out. But for me, you know, that's very much who I am. Um, and so I would want them to know that because if it's not a good fit, like. Yeah, like, you know? this resume, you're right. This, this is, is like. This is who I am and I'm not apologizing. Yeah, that's this, is so, right. <laughs> this feels very like, kind of like, yeah, resume for the, the new era where you're just trying to find a culture fit, you know, like. Well, and with about... that, yeah, with that, you know, like every position I've ever had, even if it's a part-time job, they've asked me to take some sort of personality quiz, you know, to like see if I'd be a good fit. So on my resume walkthrough wall there next to my resume and pictures of myself, I incorporated mm -hmm. uh, my personality results there. Oh, um, is it like Myers-Briggs or what, which test? I don't remember what it's called, but you can click on it. Yeah, and it I think it's Myers. And you can read me thoroughly. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> So that is who I am, if my Sagan doesn't explain it enough to you. <laughs> well, there's like 10 personality tests, so we'll need to incorporate more of them. There's also the what your least favorite food says about your personality BuzzFeed quiz, so we might <laughs> want to have that on here too. <laughs> oh my gosh, um, I've been so obsessed with personality yes. tests. My wall, my wall of personality tests would be so long. <laughs> Um, and I, I also added, um, I love greenery and plants and nature and all of that. I cannot keep a plant alive for the life of me. I always forget about it or I overwater it. I have a few, which you may see in the background somewhere, but I have no idea how they're still living. So what's nice is here, <laughs> they can thrive without, without me damaging them. Um, but yeah, and then as you can see, I, I definitely show off all of my travels because that's something I'm really passionate about. Um, and so the, the next wall over is kind of where I break down some of the cool things that I've done in the past. Um, so like the top image there of the map, that is, those are all the places I've gone to so far. Um, I think there's like 15 countries. Um, 
but yeah, so I thought that was kind of cool to incorporate. Um, and then you'll see images throughout my Sagan where I, I tried my best to say like where they were taken, um, just to show it off a little bit more. Yeah, that was in Croatia. Oh yeah, this is, yeah. Listen, this is how I like relive my experiences in yes. quarantine, cause I'm like, I want to be back there, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it's okay, That's so I, want. I actually created, I don't know, Matt, if you remember this, but like, a couple years ago, I made a Sagan that was for this. Na this national park is crazy. It's like the most, one of the most beautiful places on the planet. And I just put like, I just recreated the national park or tried to in a room. Like that was what the whole room was about. was just like pictures. I didn't know you could get in the water. Yeah. Well, there's certain ones you can. There's another park that you can't uh, actually get in the water, but this one you could. Cool. Um, super, super cool. Also, Croatia is where Game of Thrones, a lot of Game of Thrones was mm -hmm. filmed. So I went on a whole tour because I had to get my little fix. Uh, That's actually, cool. if you're a Game of Thrones fanatic, um, where Cersei had to do like kind of the walk of shame through the town, I got to walk that same walk, clothed, <laughs> but you know, so that was kind of cool. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Yeah. And then right next to that, that's actually, um, I did this really long hike. I had this whole moment, uh, some may call it a crisis, but um, <laughs> after graduating from MSU, I was like, I need to do something. I've never traveled alone. Let me just go and do it. And so I started in Lisbon and I backpacked all the way up to Santiago, Spain. And it's actually called um, Camino de Santiago. Uh, it's like a, it's a um, really popular trail. There's several different routes you can take. So I just took this way. Um, but yeah, I hiked like 500 miles. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. So a lot of these pictures are from that. Um, and it was just a really cool experience. And it was the first time too, one, traveling alone, but then also being able to really see uh, a different culture that wasn't mm, influenced by tourism as much, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm, if I only have one shot to go to Europe, yeah, I'm probably gonna hit up like Paris and like certain like tourist destinations. But here I was able to really appreciate both the big cities that people would travel to as well as the small towns that most people never see. Um, and so Portugal and Spain have a very close place in my heart now. And so I wanted That's to incorporate that here. So awesome. Yeah, 500 mile, yeah. Like these, <laughs> it's like, it's almost like these words are so small, like for something so big. Like I probably, I didn't even like recognize that that's what this was representing. I was like, oh, she like drove. It was like a road <laughs> trip, but no, you walked it. I walked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then that's from Portugal, that picture. Okay. Um, and I also incorporated the globe underneath as well, just to, again, highlight the travels. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the table, you'll see a little bit more from that as well. Um, okay. I had a Fitbit at the time. And so I added just to show how many steps. Stairs. <laughs> First off, I was in the best shape of my life when this happened. <laughs> this 18 miles, that was a slow day for me. That was like me doing half of what I normally would. Because you would start at like 5 a.m., and you would hike literally until late afternoon and then you'd get to your destination and like pass out and sleep and then eat, you know, like that was, that was what you did. So this was just one day. Um, yeah. Wow. That's <laughs> really awesome. getting back to that, but. <laughs> yeah. That really puts it in perspective. That's so yeah. relatable, you know. Like I got 99 problems and they're all floors. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, you want to build? Wait, do we have? So we can come back to this room. Um, we're about halfway through. I was thinking that maybe we could build the room together. You know, we you have this globe. Maybe some of our viewers don't know what kind of objects are available within Sacredworks, what they can find and can't find. Um, so yeah, if we can, we swap screens and go to yours, and you could show us a little bit about your building process. Yeah, sure. Okay. Let me, I, will I think stop. you have to unshare. Stop first. sharing. Okay. Okay. Can you see my screen? Mm-hmm. 
All right, so this is an empty room. This is the same um, template or Sagan that I started in. So this is kind of where people would begin. Um, Looks so different. I know, a blank canvas, but here we go. Um, so for me, as I said, I start by framing it out with the furniture, um, which is really cool. And you can search by what you want. So I used this desk and there's cool little like hacks you can do too. Um, so I actually, you know, this is just one, oh, it's still loading, one desk, but I actually copied beat it and made it into a desk um, so that it would be longer, which you can do from clicking that button. If you watch, uh, again, another reference, if you watch The Office, the mega desk, um, <laughs> Dwight references that. But so, you know, this is how I had created it. This is a little, you know, Okay. And then, you know, you get your computer monitor, maybe a lamp. Um, there's a lot of like customizable features here, which is really cool. Um, and so every single, you know, if you wanted to make multiple versions, you know, like send one company, one resume walkthrough and another, a different one. Um, mm -hmm. You could, you could do that and switch it up a little bit and give them a different look um, to see which one gets you the most attention. Um, so that's just an idea for some furniture objects. Also, um, one of the ways that I was able to incorporate um, all of those different file types uh, is with uh, bookshelves. So I might put a bookshelf here. Again, this is already looking different than what I had created, but like you can see how, you know, you can recreate certain looks here. Um, um, one question I have, so I know uh, you've already chosen the room that you're going to build in. We have various sized rooms and some of them are triple the size of this one. Mm -hmm. um, is there a reason why you picked a smaller room versus a larger room or why you picked this one in particular? So I picked this one because, so there's, there's tons of options, you know, there's even smaller rooms, like more square, there's thinner hallways, you know, there's a lot of opportunities there. I chose this one because I thought that it was the easiest to navigate um, when I thought about, you know, how many walls do I really need to communicate, you know, all the different parts of a resume. Um, and so I thought, you know, this one does it the best, um, in my opinion, but there are a lot of ways where you can like spread it out, have more space, um, really hone in on different, different certain, like features, different things that you want. Um, but this one was just one where I'm like, this would be pretty easy for someone totally unfamiliar with Sagan Works to just navigate through. And, mm -hmm. you know, they turn here and they're like, oh, there's something else. Oh, here's something else versus some of the other ones that are much larger have um, like other panels that you can still navigate through, but might not be as inherent um, to someone who, you know, a recruiter who's like, what is this? I've never seen this before. Right. Um, we so we have a question uh, from Rob and he's asking, do you have to create separate Sagans or copy and save a slight, slightly different Sagan? So I think he, seeing the duplicate feature on the desk, mm -hmm. I think he's wondering, can you create a room and say for different recruiters, just copy the whole room and yeah, edit it a little bit. So, and let me know, Shanley, if I'm wrong with that. I think that's something that's coming in 2021, right? Is the copy. Yeah. Feature? So the, the functionality is there. It's just not, not user facing right now. So basically the duplicate feature is pretty limited to furniture and files that you brought in, um, in the space. And we have the capability of copying the room, but, um, you would have to work with the Sagan works, uh, employee in order to do it. So Rob, if you want one, I'll do it for you. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's no way to do it right now on your own. Um, but there eventually will be, yes. 
Well, and we can show you too in a little bit um, how you can share a Sagan as well um, to a recruiter directly. Um, and then there'll be other options coming again in 2021, um, which I'm super excited for. Um, but let me show you too. So now that we have some of the furniture in there, a little bit of a framework, um, at least for this wall. Um, now I'm going to oops, look at different content that I've already imported. So, you know, my resume. And it's based on your title with what you've titled the file. So here's my resume now incorporated there. Here's that image that I made outside of Sagan Works with Canva or any other sort of photo editing tool. Um, and you can rename them really easily if you wanted to, and it would automatically change it. So like, whatever you want it to be. And then now that's, yeah. maybe it takes a minute to load, but it'll change to resume one, two, three um, as the title that pops up at the bottom. Um, and when I was thinking about like, oh, okay, what, what deserves an entire wall versus just something on um, the bookshelf? For me, I based that off of this uh, one sheet resume. I was like, all right, so for LinkedIn, if you export your profile, you're gonna get something similar to this. Uh, based on, you know, there's, and there's ton of, a ton of different ways you can organize this, just like how you would build out your, or your resume. Um, but based on LinkedIn, they're saying, hey, your top skills, that's one of the, you know, that is an important um, topic to discuss and highlight. So it's over here um, to the side, but at the top of the page. So to me, I'm like, all right, that means that deserves its own category, you know, its own wall in my Sagan. Um, same with the experience, you know, as you saw, I broke it out based on um, both, you know, the, I at, included the, um, times at which I was working there um, or, you know, in school uh, to kind of just give some further insight into that. But um, I also incorporated in, uh, the different positions, the promotions, you know, here you can see, oh, digital marketing specialist. And now it says digital marketing manager, but that doesn't, that doesn't excite me. That doesn't do anything for me. You know, to me, that's just text, you know, same with here. Like there's, it doesn't go into depth as to like what I actually did at those companies. Um, and so that's where I saw Sagan Works really providing that solution and giving that extra little push that maybe will make me stand out compared to other um, people in my position um, looking well, for the same role. One idea I had when you were talking about the experience section, section and like uh, the timing of that, um, I was thinking if you did it, since this room does incorporate your personal and your professional life or the way that you've created the existing one does it that way, it'd be kind of interesting to have like a timeline image um, that goes across maybe a large wall and you could start even with your birth and like go through like, like fun, like monumental mm -hmm. moments, like first learns to ride a bike and then you have like, you know, graduates high school and like goes off to MSU and you know, like completes degree, interns here. What do you think of that? I think that would be super cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, that could be a, like, that would be super awesome. And there's other rooms too that give you like an even bigger wall to work with, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that would be really, really sweet to just have something like an image timeline that just paneled across, you know, multiple walls. Um, yeah, that'd be really cool. Um, yeah, there's tons, there's tons of different ways that you can do this, uh, you know, different things that you can highlight. For me, I used a lot of the sculptures um, and things like that that are offered as furniture um, because I love to travel, I love art, um, and so I used that to kind of communicate um, different aspects of myself, but, you know, maybe somebody who wants to create um, their resume walk through maybe they're a chef you know we have a t there's a ton of food options here that you could incorporate as well um to kind of showcase different skills that you have um and these are just some of the different furniture objects that sagan works provides um and i think of the furniture objects as uh something that just helps um 
make this virtual space feel more like home or something that you're comfortable with and recognize um, and something that amplifies the content that you're putting in your own content. Um, so again, like I like to travel, so I'm gonna use a globe furniture object, um, you know, and incorporate that. And maybe right. put that on my desk because I'm like, you know what? That's something I want them to know right away <laughs> is that I love to travel. So there we go. <laughs> Trinelli, were you going to say something? Yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, I think the little objects are one of my favorite parts about it because not only does it like the content you have up there, but it's just such an easy way to like express your personality. Cause I think that personally, like I've been finding it hard to like, when talking to a recruiter, just like, you know, like expressing like who I am genuinely and I think that's such a big part about hire, like getting hired is like oh like how do I share like who I genuinely am and I think that like in your like in the passing and like that we were just looking at like you have so much that shows who you are I think that's really hard to convey for, for some people sometimes just through talking um well and especially if you know this especially if you're using this before you even have an interview you know like how is mm -hmm. that that LinkedIn resume? How is that supposed to do anything for me? <laughs> you know, like you really have to yeah. try really hard to get noticed these days. And um, I think this is one way that you can really accomplish that. Yeah. And like Rob said in the chat, like it helps to create conversations, but it does that even before the conversation starts. Like you already have like messages that are being conveyed. Exactly. Maggie, how did you get the different links from the finished one into the Sagan, the website links? So I used uh, Sagan Works Google Chrome extension. Um, and that way I'm able to, you know, as I'm on Sagan Works website, if that's something that I want in my Sagan, um, I would just, as I'm browsing, um, add that to my, uh, as a knowledge item is mm -hmm. what Sagan Works calls it. Um, and it just does that automatically, which is awesome. And then it just appears in here. You can see all of these are links here, um, but you can go to web pages. Here we go. So here's all the ones from other things that I've created. Um, yes, I am also a Quentin Tarantino fan, but that's <laughs> a different webinar for that one. Um, so you'll see, oh, here's my you know English major info. So now that appears that way um, versus images that I've uploaded will look different um, and documents, same thing. So like, you know, I write press releases. So here's a press release that you can see, or maybe it's a, a web page of an article that someone, some publisher picked up from a press release that I've written. You know, those are things that I think are going to be really valuable especially for someone who's in, in the marketing. Uh, when field. you, for the press releases, did you upload them by dragging them into the Sagan or did you upload them to the uploader? How did you So you can do it either way. Um, it's easiest for me to just drag it in. Uh, like, let me try actually right now. I have a couple images on my desktop. Um, let's see, I'll pull this one so in. I'm dragging so Zoom, an image now. Yeah, so Zoom won't let you see all the windows, but she probably has her file explorer open to desktop and then is, or maybe is just literally pulling from her desktop and then I'm just drops it in. Okay, nice. So here are like two images that now are populated. They're in there. Oh, well, that was a very, <laughs> <laughs> not a great image to use, but uh, let's see, maybe this one. Um, that's something that Blue Llama, if you're hungry. <laughs> but yeah, so you can pull directly from your desktop or um, can you guys see, can you see this? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so, or I could go like and pull it in here. And again, this is just images that I'm showing, but this applies to PDFs, uh, Word docs, uh, 
whatever you'd like. Now for web pages, you'd have to use the Chrome extension. Um, and that's how you could get like videos and different things like that. Um, and so now you can see here's my, my image. It probably needs some time just to load. Yeah. And then here it is. Um, okay, so I, there's a couple things I want to do before we wrap up for the day. One, can we show everyone how you would share, or maybe we'll talk through a few different ways you could actually share this resume, Sagan, once it's done. Um, yeah, let's start yeah. with the share button. So the most direct way to share right now um, is by going to our little hamburger menu when you're ready. And you could share and you can type in the email address and click share and they'll get a link directly to your uh, Sagan, and then they can dive right into it. Um, or you can publish it to the community, which is uh, like the public database in SaganWorks that all users can access. Um, it's your resume. You might not want to do that just because that's personal information. Um, but other things that you create, like if you created a you know, virtual portfolio of your artwork that you've been doing or your graphic design and you're really proud of it and you want people to look at it, then maybe that's something you would share um, to the community too. Um, so this is where I would probably say like, all right, I'm going to email this to the recruiter who I've been in contact with. Um, you know, if they said, oh, can you give me a writing sample? Or, you know, like that's kind of an additional ask that uh, a lot of companies will ask in my, in my role. Um, and so I might be like, oh yeah, here's my writing samples. You can access them in my Sagan you know, or find another way and, and send them that email directly. Um, another way too is if you have a website, uh, you know, some of, some of the SaganWorks users who have businesses have embedded it on their website. Um, that's something you can do or embed it on your blog, uh, which we saw with the Blue Llama Jazz Club mm -hmm. website, if you recall. Um, and then in 2021, hush hush, uh, there's going to be link sharing on socials, which I am super excited about, um, so that you'll be able to uh, create a link, share it to your LinkedIn profile, you know, publish it as an article, whatever you'd like, um, and people can just dive right in uh, and access that. Sweet. Um, can I share my screen again? Yeah. Stop share. Um, I'm just going to share, and also uh, we have probably a little less than 10 minutes um, before we wrap up, so if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, can you see my screen now, my Chrome? Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so I just pulled up, this is a professor that's used SaganWorks for his classes, um, really cool dude, Jesse Mason. Uh, he put his resume as a Sagan and embedded it on his, his main website. So you go to his homepage, here's a room, I click and I load it, I can just walk around it directly on the page. Um, so, And you can see that he used a different Sagan to start because mm -hmm. you can see this one's wider. Um, so this is probably the large gallery Sagan I'm right. seeing. Right. Um, and another thing too, oh. I Oh, sorry. sorry. No, go for it. I was going to say, but there are also really cool templates where like this made the most sense to me. Um, just trying to be a young professional, um, mm -hmm. trying to apply for jobs. But, you know, if you're trying to apply to a fun startup or something like that, something that's a little quirky, uh, there are other rooms that, you know, you could be in a barn, you could be outdoors in nature, you could be on a beach, you know, like there's, there's different um, rooms that you can start in. Very cool. Uh, I think I forget what I was going to say, but oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It probably wasn't important. Um, so I wanted, I did want to take us back to the main room, um, the finished product, because A, it's just a happy place. Mm -hmm. And B, I was thinking that maybe uh, Rochelle and Trinali could give some feedback or um, talk about. So Trinali is an artist. In fact, a lot of people we work with are artists. <laughs> um, but Trinali is an artist. She's in the art school at Michigan. And she's she has a portfolio that she's put into a Sagan in the past. Um, so I don't know if you have any ideas or input on how you would maybe do that or change this room. Yeah, so I've actually also created a portfolio Sagan that was inspired through my resume as well, but more toward my like online website portfolio. And I think that's, that's interesting. Um, 
to think about how Maggie did hers differently just because like I have like it's just interesting because I have more of my artwork displayed on the walls and the process similar to how Maggie had some of her process also on bookshelves and things like that but things like that are really nice to display um and I also like the wayfinding aspect that she has with the arrows that's something that I also mm, yeah. have um these arrows up here on the yeah um, when right. if you were to send it to a recruiter or something that really helps to guide them and if they don't want to be like follow that they could also just walk around freely to explore I think that's interesting too mm. yeah I like the um combination of images and like the way you use the um, bookshelves to like really highlight what's on your resume. Yeah, the images act almost like labels. Like you don't, you, you have the words, but the image, sometimes you're just looking at the image and you know what you're going to get on the bookshelf. Yeah. Um, and like, even like, cause I have creative background and Maggie said she has a lot of like creative background. I think that this type of use case would also be really nice for people without that creative background as well because I know a lot of my friends even are looking for other ways to like like take their resume to the next level by like making making a website that just has like a more um fleshed out version of their skills and like past work experiences so I think that this could also be usable by like people who don't have like a clear or strong sense of design well and there's a lot of inspiration you can pull from mm -hmm. um, both from SaganWorks has an explore page where you can dive into certain Sagans, uh, mm -hmm. even without having an account, which is really cool um, just to get inspiration. But then once you do have an account, um, there's other user created Sagans that are just super cool that you can, you know, ways that people incorporated it without me, you know, ways that I would never think of doing it. Um, yeah, that's awesome, I think. Because it makes it really like usable by everybody then. Yeah. So this is the explore page that Maggie was referring to on our website. And this is just, um, this is like a collection of embedded rooms that you can load up. And then within the app, um, I can pop up to map view. There's gonna be a lot of, there's gonna be a lot going on in this map, I think. <laughs> this is like, this is my SaganWorks account. Um, so I have a lot of different rooms here. But these are all top down. This is like the top down perspective of your entire universe or world of, within SaganWorks. And a lot of these, anything with the green icon are public Sagans or a Sagan that I didn't build. So there I can explore them, but I can't edit them. And then um, the ones that have the blue icons are ones that I do own. And I've maybe done a little bit of work in, maybe done a lot. And then the way I can go about finding the public. So these are the templates. You know, we talked about large rooms versus small rooms and what you pick for different purposes, but there's different vibes. Like you have the barn, you have the basement. Um, so that's in this section. And then if you go to the community, you would find all of our, our public rooms. Um, that might take a minute to load. I was One other thing I would like to add is you can explore, well, Maggie, her Sagan isn't public, but if Maggie was to share her Sagan with you, you can actually explore it on your phone. Um, if you download the SaganWorks app, you can open the Sagan on your phone. Oh, Maggie, you made this one too. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll let this load in the background and see how long it takes. It's already a cool cover image. Oh yeah. I'm going to cut this a little bit short, by the way, the whole webinar. I'm going to wrap it up in like a minute. So if anyone <laughs> has any questions, now's your time. Um, but also you can hit us up at shanley at com or basically <laughs> any of our first names at .com, um if you, if you need help or if you have any follow-up questions after the webinar. Um, but the start location. Okay, so we have a feature that lets you set this cover image for Sagans and it looks like, Maggie, you did that for this. Mm -hmm. What we do have. Um, all right. Thank you, Rob. Rob can't wait to make Sagans. <laughs> cool. Share them with us.
Rob. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Okay. Um, I am going to, we'll leave it at, at this, uh, the sweet Sagan. Everyone should come check it out. It's public. Um, it's really an cool. Account. Yeah. Right create an account. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you everyone for, for joining us today. Um, oh, quick. Is the signs two docs? That's what Rob's asking. Uh, what sign? I don't know. Rob, what do you mean? The neon. I feel like he's talking to me through a tunnel. Is it feminist? Um, oh, it's the neon and the bat. Oh, okay. The we, oh. we believe. I'm sorry. I keep panning awful. Um, we believe in the power of girls. I think he's wondering if we layered them. Is it one image? That's one image. Although, you know, that's another opportunity where you might be able to layer them. You kind of have to play around and see. Um, but yeah, that was just an image that I pulled. Um, I love the way that Neon looks in these uh, Sagan, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Rob, layering has some, we, you, sometimes in applications you can choose what you can bring to the front or put in the back. Um, we don't have that feature yet. So we actually, things that are layered will sometimes swap position. Um, yeah, I would say I'd recommend layering in another app and then bringing it as one one image, which Rob already came you to can, that conclusion. You can layer in Canva, um, yeah, and it'll just come out as a normal as an image, depending on how you download it. But um, right, yeah, cool. Okay, thank you, everyone. All right, <laughs> everyone, have a great weekend. <laughs> I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, bye.